<clears throat> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, yet again to another edition of What Really Matters NYC with your host, Tony Keevan. That's me. We are live, and the show is about you, about topics in Manhattan that impact folks in Manhattan. And you can dial in at 212-757-1541. We also have our commentator. Commentator Lorraine, are you here? Yes, I'm here. And commentator Lorraine gives us the, uh, you know, keeps us um, apolitical and focused on the 40,000 foot view so that we can really remember what really matters. And we have a guest tonight for the first section of our show. His name is Josh Cross. Hi, Josh. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. So we're talking to Josh tonight because um, development, of course, is always a big topic. And in our, in our second half of our show, we'll talk a little bit about a developer and we'll do the weather, et cetera. So stay tuned for that. But um, we, I was uh, attracted to this story this week because um, it, it has sort of the intersection of uh, lobbying and um, Department of Buildings and Mayor de Blasio and choices between um, development and education and had a lot of good mix of stuff and some decisions were made this week so I thought I'd invite Josh to talk to us a little bit about that. So Josh tell us about PS 163 where it is and what is the PS 163 task force? Uh, basically what it is, is PS163 is an elementary school, a K-6 school on 97th Street between Columbus and Amsterdam. Uh, it is a very extremely, relatively even for the city, diverse school. Um, you'll find that there's a lot of kids that go there who are drawn by the G&T program and there's a lot of neighborhood kids. Uh, certainly one of the more extremely ethnically diverse schools I find in Manhattan, especially on the Upper West Side. Yeah, what the I task think force your, your is, demographics I saw were... Um majority Hispanic yes and then um, the school's 70 oh. percent minority children yes okay um, and what's gone on is there is a parking lot next to the school that somebody has been trying to build on for years it originally was in the hands of Chatrit the big developer that if you google you'll find out they have a whole bunch of corrupt stuff going on and weird insider training in Uzbekistan and whatnot um, and the problem for Chatrit was that the, the property was zoned only R7, so they couldn't build more than seven stories there. Um, so they worked at a land swap deal with the Jewish Home Life Care Nursing Home that's at 106, and they were looking to rebuild, JHL was. They have a permit and everything. They could rebuild tomorrow at 106th Street where they are and build a huge tower there. Um, the problem is is that they, they were offered a large sum of money by Chatrit, so they want to build in the parking lot next to our school. Okay, so they were offered the money to move, uh, to come to, to come to, they were offered, you mean, incentives to uh, build on that property? The developer was going to give them a bunch of money in a land swap because a okay. nursing home is a community facility. They can, ch they have different zoning Okay, so tell me, what is this facility for? It's a, the, JHL, which is a nursing home on 106th, wants to build themselves a new building. Um, and of course, a nursing home has every right to update their facilities. Um, but because of the swap deal, they want to build it next to the school. And what is the JLH? JHL. It's the Jewish Home Life Care. Okay. Um, are they are they supportive of Mr. Uh, Mayor De Blasio? Um, I'm not sure what they are. I certainly know that the union, uh, the 1199 union of the people that are working there, are certainly friendly with the mayor. Okay. So there's potentially like a Jewish lobby that potentially influenced the mayor perhaps to do something because of this deal with the land swap and... Um... I, I wouldn't say it's a Jewish lobby. Okay. Uh, uh, they, it happens to be a Jewish organization, but I wouldn't... Put, and, and they may be a perfectly great organization. The problem is, is that for them to get permitted to build, they need to go through the New York State Department of Health. And where we're at now is the Department of Health didn't do the job that it's legally required to do to make sure that when the building goes up, the people around it are protected. And so we sued the Department of Health, not JHL, to get them to enforce the law as currently written. Of course. And we're, and we're currently in the appeals process. But what happened last week where Mayor de Blasio granted right. something? Well, here, here's what happened. Last week, as part of this appeals process, an amicus brief was filed on the behalf of JHL. That brief was written by Susan Amron, the chief of the environmental law division for the city. And so what she basically said in her brief 
which is almost word for word echoing what JHL said about the situation, is that for the Department of Health to follow the law on the books, it makes it too much uncertainty for developers. So they should overturn the decision, even though the Department of Health didn't follow the law. Okay, but what did Mayor de Blasio do? It's the, the city that did this, and then he has refused to engage with us and also stonewalled on both this process and then also stonewalled on a noise bill that we're working on with council member uh, Levine, Mark Levine, to protect schools from construction next to us. Uh, but why would he do that? Because he's just such a good negotiator, apparently, on other development things around the, the, the you know, getting you know, public housing was his... I, um... I would disagree with that. The, uh, the recent bill that we're talking about is a huge giveaway to developers where we're getting unlimited 100-story buildings for maybe 50,000 low-income units. I don't think that he's... What, what he's shown time and time again is what when Rebney talks, when the the construction workers talk, when certain unions talk, he asks how high he needs to jump. This has been another sweetheart deal. If you look in the post the other day, um, the city swapped some land where they let, basically let somebody make a thousand percent profit off a, a nursing home down on the Lower East Side. So I mean, time and time again, the mayor is siding, and and the, the city's organization are siding on behalf of developers over people. We're not, this isn't some NIMBY thing. We just want the law to be followed as it's currently written. We're not trying to change the law. We just want, the Department of Health didn't do their job. The judge said so. And now the city's lawyers have said they shouldn't have to follow the law because it's too hard for developers. <laughs> Lorraine, do you have any questions or comments? Well, yes, um, uh, it's a very complicated issue. I wanted to know exactly what would the children be losing, space? or um, natural uh, sort of park environment? Um, those are almost secondary to the situation. What they're, what they're trying to build right next to the school with 30 feet um, uh, next to the school is a 20-story tower with almost, n what we've been asking for all along is enough noise mitigation so that school and learning isn't disrupted. We've talked to the, the Mount Sinai Children's so Center just to find out what, what would actually be safe it, the land that they want to dig up has been a parking lot for 50 years, well into leaded gas. There's lead, there's barium, there's all sorts of stuff in the soil. We've seen experts who've said that, and this is what the judge affirmed, that the analysis of the soil was done insufficiently to test whether or not it would affect children. And because the school is what's called a sensitive receptor legally, they had to do a lot more mitigation of stuff just so that the children would be safe. This isn't about, oh, we want parks or we want you to build us a swimming pool or a greenhouse. This is, if you're gonna build a building there, follow the law, make sure these kids' learning environment isn't harmed. The thing is, is that 70% of the kids, roughly, give or take, who go to this school, don't have a choice to go to another school. And what happens is, is if you have a majority white school, all of a sudden there's a super powerful PTA that, that can do stuff and fight off construction, or at least protect themselves. These are a bunch okay. of kids who have nowhere else to go to school, and they're going to have a three-year construction project of a 20-story oh, building right next to them with lead in the air, with dust, and they haven't done what they're legally required to do. So what's the next step for Mayor de Blasio? What do you want him to do? Or actually, what do you want his wife to tell him to do? <laughs> whether, it's, whether it's his wife or him, first of all, this... this I assure um, you, sir, when it comes to housing, it's his wife. I'll, I'll grant you that. Um, with, with this amicus brief, it's, it's been, uh, they, they put in a statement, but they haven't fully filed it. We'd like them to pull it back. We would like the mayor to go ahead and say, you know what, JHL, you lost. You need to either offer the school something to fully protect those kids, or, or you need to build where you're currently permitted at 106. And what we also want him to do is we want him to support the, the bill written by Mark Levine and has over 30 signatures, I believe now, uh, at least 25. In, in the city council, it's it, it, intro 420, and what that is is a noise bill that would limit the effects of construction noise on schools during school hours. Yeah, I Except mean, I think all your stuff is very, see, what you're saying is you're not against the development, you just want it done properly according to the law. Let's follow the law, yeah. Yeah, okay, well, very cool. All right, listen, if people want to learn more about what you're talking about here, they can go to, I put your site here, ps163taskforce.org. Right. And is there like a petition they can sign or something that you can bring pressure to, you know, um, well, whoever's the running the show over there? The best thing anybody can do at this point 
is to call the mayor's office or call their local council member and make sure that they are signing on to intro 420 and that they're telling their council member they can't believe that the city would do anything to, to, to choose developers over kids. Is that, it's called 420? Yes, <laughs> I, it's, and strangely it's not the marijuana bill, I know. <laughs> but um, Quite interesting. It, it just happens to be the order it was filed in. Okay, well it's easy for people to remember. All right, well listen, Josh, thank you so much for joining us, okay? We really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, peace, love, take care. All right.